Palantir Technologies, ticker symbol PLTR, is a popular stock. The company has a market cap of $50 billion. It is a technology firm within the software and infrastructure industry. Its co-founder and chairman, Peter Thiel, is a renowned entrepreneur, venture capitalist, and political activist. It is led by another of its co-founders, Dr. Alexander Karp, who is a billionaire businessman in his own right. The stock has performed well over the last one year. It rose from $13.65 in May 2023 to $21.24 in May 2024. That is over a 55% gain compared to the S&P 500, which has grown only 26% during that time. The stock is held by top institutional investors, including the Vanguard Group, BlackRock, Renaissance Technologies, State Street, and ARK Invest. ARK Invest's Kathy Wood is a radical promoter of Palantir. Her fund is holding Palantir in at least six of its active ETFs, including ARK Fintech Innovation, ARK Genomic Revolution, ARK Innovation, ARK Autonomous Tech and Robotics, ARK Next Generation Internet, and ARK Space Exploration and Innovation. Palantir's investors will make a lot of money if there is a second AI wave in the market or if Palantir can implement all its plans as scheduled. According to Kathy Wood, the innovation industry will be worth $220 trillion by 2030. If that happens, Palantir will be a big part of it as it is an innovative and forward-looking company. But this video is not about hope. It is about facts and evidence. It is about all that is wrong with Palantir. It is intended to prove to you how Palantir may not prosper as a company as one might desire in the coming years. As a financial market analyst, I might say the future for Palantir looks much grimmer than what it has achieved over the past year, and its growth may stall soon. I see the stock stumbling even when the overall market enjoys a bull run in the coming years when the interest rate becomes normal again. I would go as far as to say that the signs of Palantir's weaknesses are so acute that any conscious investor should think twice before investing any money in this stock. Number 1. Insider Selling when a company's insiders buy shares of their company, it is seen as a positive sign of the stock's future growth. When insiders begin to sell their holdings, many of them together, instead of buying more shares, it generally suggests the company is losing relevance and headed toward difficult times. It is easy to understand why. They are the people in the know. They have first-hand information on the plans and programs of the company. They know how much money is coming in and how much of it is going out. They know when new products will hit the market and what will be their selling point. Inside selling may not be that important when one or two executives empty their holdings for personal reasons, say to diversify their portfolios, buy a property, or meet some emergency expenses. But when many executives begin to sell at the same time and around the same stock price, it indicates that there is a consensus among insiders about the company's future. Palantir's insiders have been selling the company's shares like there is no tomorrow. Over the last one year alone, these insiders have sold a staggering $719 million worth of Palantir shares. Of that, only in the last three months, they sold over $450 million worth of Palantir shares. Insider selling may not be a problem if executives also buy their company's shares from time to time. As you can see, Palantir insiders did not buy even one share of their company in the last year, which is an extraordinary situation because we often hear that the company has a bright future, that it is an AI company with an edge, and that it will become more successful than NVIDIA one day. The biggest disappointment is Peter Thiel's selling of Palantir shares worth $273 million in May 2024. Between May 8th and 10, Thiel sold about 13 million PLTR shares at a price between $20.78 and $21.33. Thiel knows where the money is. He is an early investor in Meta. His name cannot be separated from the enormous success PayPal has had in the last two decades. 
he incorporated Palantir in 2003. If he believed his investment would double within the next two years, he would not have sold so many shares of Palantir. Unfortunately, many investors believe they will go to the moon by investing in this company. It is like boarding a ship whose captain has already jumped into the water. Number 2. Palantir is terribly overvalued. In one of my videos a few weeks ago, I said that I would buy Palantir shares if they fell below $10. That is over a 50% discount from today's share price. I still believe that that would be the case sooner or later. I just have to wait patiently. You see, the intrinsic value of the Palantir stock is only $7.13 per share. That makes the stock about 67% overvalued if the current price is around $21 per share. Understandably, Palantir is a technology company and it is supposed to be overvalued. Its future growth is already priced in its share price today, but the intrinsic value is very important for an investor. Sooner or later, the share price catches up with the intrinsic value if the economy is not good. Even when the economy is good, as you hear from Fed's Jerome Powell every month, and when the S&P 500, Nasdaq and Dow Jones are making new highs, Palantir is declining gradually. Today, it is trading 25% down from its 52-week high of $27.50. Buy a stock when it is undervalued by more than 20%. Sell a stock when it enters the overvalued territory. Find a new undervalued stock when you have cashed out your holdings. This is how you can grow your money faster. Can Palantir come down to $10? Of course. Tesla came down to $140 from $400. Roku came down from $473 to $43. Netflix came down to $190 from $683. Palantir can fall even below its intrinsic value of $7.13. It has already given a weaker-than-expected sales outlook for the next year. Number 3. Palantir's Weak Profitability Score A company's share price may depend on many primary or secondary variables. Of that, profitability is undoubtedly the most important one. A company with good brand identity and leadership often draws investors' attention. The reason is not that such a company produces quality products or provides quality services, but because those products and services convert into cash and profit. If Apple or Microsoft must win their investors' backing, they must make money for them. They must be profitable in the long run. There is no alternative to that. You do not invest in a company because you are loyal to it. You invest in it for the sole purpose of making money. Sadly enough, Palantir's profitability score is only 40 out of a possible 100. That is taking into consideration its margins, efficiency in capital management, and ability to generate cash. This weak profitability indicates that Palantir will have weaker growth in the future. If profit is limited, its innovation and expansion will be limited. If it does not expand or innovate, its profitability will suffer. If profitability suffers, its operational activities will suffer. With that, millions of retail investors like you and me. Number 4. Palantir's Unbound Reliance on Government Contracts Historically, Palantir has been heavily dependent on government contracts for its annual revenue. As you can see, 77% of its revenue came from government contracts in 2020, while only 22% came from commercial ventures. This is not a good sign for a company, but 2020 was also not a regular year either. Because of COVID-19, Businesses could not expand as they would like to that year. All industries and sectors saw red, more or less. Technology companies had an excellent boom the year after, but it did not take long before they lost over 80% of their market cap. In Palantir's case, the value of government contracts contracted following 2020. In 2021, the value of those was only 47% of its annual revenue, while in 2022 and 2023 they were 19% and 14% respectively. In a normal case, that would have been good news. You would have thought Palantir found its success out of government contracts. 
its commercial wing, became extraordinarily successful to dwarf its services to governments. The only problem is that that was not true. You see, with the decline of government contracts over the last four years, the commercial revenue of Palantir also fell. While commercial activities accounted for 22% of its revenue in 2020, in 2023, that percentage came down to 20%. Can Palantir's revenue from government contracts fall more? Absolutely. Governments change. There are lobbyists on the Hill. There are interest groups, political adversaries, and financial circles, each desperate to cancel the other. A new government may channel the public fund to causes different from those that require Palantir's specialized software and data platforms. With its commercial activities limited or delayed, Palantir will see a serious decline in its annual revenue if it suddenly finds itself out of government contracts or if the existing contracts are not renewed. Number 5. Palantir's commercial success may be limited. If Palantir does not depend on government contracts for its revenue, it must find success in the commercial field. That is, it has to find customers in businesses and corporations. That means it must adapt to the market of which it is a part. However, with the kind of service Palantir provides, it will not be easy to scale its business overnight. The main reason behind that is high expense. If a business or entity wants to hire Palantir, it has to be ready to integrate its system with its infrastructure. Integration is important for a software or AI system to function properly. Deintegrating itself from Palantir can be so costly that the business may instantly be discouraged from becoming a Palantir customer in the first place. Palantir's system is robust. If it must serve the commercial market, it must attend to a customer's specific needs. Is Palantir suitable for medium or small-scale businesses or entities? Can it make different versions of its service to suit the market? It may, but it will take time and cost money for production, operation, management, and technical support. Even if Palantir can make itself useful in the market, it will enter a new world of competition. AI is not a sector. It lives within the tech sector. There are many well-established companies within that sector that Palantir will find itself competing with. For example, Google, Microsoft, and Amazon. With a smaller fund at its disposal, Palantir will surely struggle to win a share of the market in the commercial field alongside these market protagonists. Number 6. Lack of Infrastructure Microsoft, Google, Amazon, and many other companies have already created their service delivery ecosystem in the tech sector. They can leverage that ecosystem to provide services at lower costs, which a newcomer like Palantir will struggle with. Palantir can catch up with them if it works fast. But there is a problem. To work fast, you need superior talent in place. Can Palantir attract that talent from the limited pool of exceptional candidates available within the tech sector? Can it lure a software engineer away from Google or Microsoft? Can it attract experienced product development executives from Amazon? There is a price for everything. But with its revenue so low compared to these market giants, it will be hard for Palantir to attract and retain specialized talents working in the field of data science and machine learning. Number 7. Geopolitical Tension Let us see where most of Palantir's customers come from. According to this chart, 74% of Palantir's customers come from the United States, while 8.6% and 4.19% come from the UK and France, respectively. Besides that, a small percentage of its customers come from Germany, Canada, India, and the Netherlands. Palantir has no customers in China or Russia. That is a big problem for it. Since the company assists the U.S. military, it will never win a contract from the Chinese or Russian governments for valid reasons. Even though it has some customers in India, it may lose those customers and get no new customers there as India grows stronger economically. Besides, India is a place of talent, and it may want to create its own AI company to compete with Palantir, much like it has created its space agency and sent its vehicle to the moon. There is no reason to think that China or Russia will ever use Palantir's services. 
Letting Palantir access their database would be like permitting the U.S. military enter their arsenal. There is no hope for Palantir there. Number 8. Public Mistrust and Scrutiny Palantir provides surveillance assistance to law enforcement authorities and vital public sector entities. It is in the business of data gathering and analysis. These are fields of acute public interest. Because of that, Palantir is already under fire in the UK and Germany. Many in the UK do not appreciate Palantir's role in creating a data platform for the National Health Service or NHS. Many are against sharing British citizens' health data with a foreign company like Palantir, which works with other government's security agencies. British civil liberties groups and data privacy promoters do not trust Palantir. Besides, in a world with brutal regional wars and international trade disputes, Palantir may not operate without being embroiled in various regulatory challenges. The bigger the company becomes, the harder it will be to overcome those challenges. I truly believe Palantir is not a stock you want to include in your portfolio. Why must you invest in Palantir, which is 67% overvalued, when Roku is 41% undervalued? Why invest in Palantir, whose insiders have been selling shares of their own company at today's price, or even below it? Why not invest in Tesla instead, if you are looking for an innovative company in the field of AI and machine learning? If you must take a significant risk... Why not invest in C Limited, which may grow tenfold in the next few years? Or invest in Upstart Holdings, which will grow significantly when the interest rates are curtailed. If you are a conservative investor, invest in Alphabet, Google's parent company. You will not regret it. Thank you for watching this far. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to my channel. I talk about money, trading, and investing. I do not make many videos, but I try to make substantial videos that will help you prepare for the market. If you want to help, do consider liking this video so it can reach more viewers like you. I have also put links to some of my popular videos on YouTube in the description below. Happy investing. Goodbye.